And welcome to Houston Newsmakers. I'm joined this morning by Tony Busby, who very early on declared that he was going to run for the office of mayor of the city of Houston. Good morning. Thank you. Good morning. Good to have you in here. Good to be here. So why did you decide to run? Well, you know, I've, I'm rolling off of the Board of Regents of Texas A&M, where we've been managing 11 universities and seven state agencies. I've learned an incredible amount about large bureaucracies and government organizations. Uh, my kids are mostly grown. Uh, the city of Houston needs a lot of help. And so I put myself uh, out there for consideration to be the mayor. I think that, uh, that, that my skill set and my background probably offers our best chance of being successful uh, as a city. So what happens if you're if you win what happens with your law practice? We we'll put the law practice, you know um, I have a lot of senior lawyers that b essentially run the law practice anyway mm -hmm. um, And so you know, I'll put that on hold and and uh, dedicate 100% of my time to to uh, trying to make this city better I thought it was unique that when you started to run you said I'm gonna fund my own campaign and you started that process and I know you, you at that time you said I'm gonna cap it at five million or something <laughs> like that has that changed or the idea about that and can others chip in if they need no, to no I'm not I'm not gonna not gonna take a campaign donation really? I um, I have now committed six million okay um, of money that I worked very hard uh, to make uh, I see it as an investment in the city I think it's important that the residents and voters know that Tony Busby, when he's the mayor, uh, will be unencumbered. By that I mean I won't be answering to any campaign donators. I won't be answering to people that uh, maybe have chosen to endorse me. Mm. I won't be looking to uh, enrich a friend or a former business partner. Uh, I'll be just trying to do my best to make the city of Houston better. So there, I'm guessing there are a number of issues where you believe you're more qualified than the current mayor. Um, it, it, what specific action has he taken during his term as mayor that made you say, you know what, I, I, I can do a better job than that. There had to be a tipping point for L you. There is, and let's, let's, just, let's just talk about it in his terms. He claims that he's the CEO of the city. Well, we uh, are the shareholders. And uh, he says, grade me for my performance. Well, let's talk about drainage. Are we any, uh, in any better shape to prepare for the next flood? I'd have to give him an F. Um, he promised to put 500 more police officers on the street. Well, he certainly didn't do that. We have fewer. He gets an F. Uh, he promised to look out for public safety. Well, we're now the city's embroiled in a lawsuit with our firefighters and our police officers. He gets an F. Uh, he promised uh, that he was going to fill. He was going to be the pothole mayor. Uh, now we know that he's filled fewer potholes in 2018 than he did than Denise Parker did the last year of her. So he gets an F. So when when you have a quote CEO who has not performed it's time to replace the CEO. So let's talk about the Proposition B, which we, you alluded to that yep. a little second ago. Firefighters uh, equal pay. The voters said, yes, let's do that. The mayor says, you know, if we do that all at one time, we're going to really cause a financial hardship. We're going to provide, have to do layoffs, that sort of thing. W what about that Proposition B would you do differently? What, what's your solution to that? We would have never been in a position to have a Proposition but B. But we're, we're, we're there now. So We are. So what and, now? And, and keep this in mind. Uh, there were talks about phasing this in months and months ago that the mayor rejected. Now the mayor's position is let's phase it in because if we don't, we have to lay off firefighters. I think he brings no credibility anymore to the issue. The city of Houston has a budget of $6.7 billion. The raise that these firefighters and that the voters voted for, 298,000 voters, almost three times more than voted for this mayor, uh, voted for Prop B. Uh, that's 3% of the budget. I reject the idea that in a $6.7 billion budget, this mayor, if he wanted to, could not find those monies without laying anybody off. So I reject that uh, on its face. But even laying that aside, let's say that he's t being honest with us finally. Uh, there is so much waste in this budget that we can see. These are the things that, that are not hidden within the budget. Uh, that we could that we could work on and make more efficiencies, that we could pay these firefighters what the voters have mandated that they be paid. From the uh, firefighters to police, I know recently Houston police were involved in a pretty high profile raid where a couple of homeowners were killed and uh, we found out after the fact that the information used to obtain a warrant was fraudulent and there may be some other things as well. Throughout that, you called for Chief Acevedo to resign. He was on this program mm -hmm. a few weeks ago. I asked him about that and here's what he said. Maybe he's looking for a chief that doesn't uh, ask the tough questions when four police officers are shot. Maybe he's looking for a chief that wants to just uh, bury their heads in the sands. And that's what he's looking for. He's right. He, he should not keep me as his chief. You know what? 
if I lose my job, I, I, I don't really care because that means it was God's plan. I want to do my job. And that's what people like Tony Busby don't get is that I'm not here to keep a job. I'm here to do a job. People always threaten you from the left. They threaten you from the right. And I always believe that when you're in these positions, if you're here to keep the job, the people have already lost. <laughs> you know, I think, I think that's interesting. And I don't want to get into a tit for tat with, right. our, with our police chief. What I called for was this mayor to, to ask this police chief who he hired to resign. Uh, oh, listen, okay. and listen, let's, let's, let's focus on what happened here. Uh, we have two citizens, and again, this, this is the same chief that called them suspects, the same chief that, that told us that black tar heroin was being sold out of that house, the same chief that said that, uh, that citizens that live nearby came to him and thanked him for cleaning up this drug activity. All of that was false. You haven't heard this chief say one time to this family, you know what, I was wrong, I admit I was wrong. This is a chief that's gone out and, and at every turn has, has done shows like this and other things as a politician to, to protect his job. Uh, listen, we don't need a politician as a police chief. We need somebody to roll up their sleeves and fix that police department. If you have a police department to where somebody can go to a municipal judge appointed by the mayor and can get a no-knock warrant, meaning that they can, in plain clothes, bust into your house, shoot your dog, shoot your wife, and then shoot and kill you uh, based on a fraudulent affidavit, which is what we believe to be the case. And if you have a system that, that has no checks and balances with it, it starts at the top. I'm a former Marine captain. I knew as a Marine Corps officer, as a captain of a company of recon Marines, that if something like that happened, mm -hmm. Heads roll at the top, and that's the point I've tried to make. And this chief should not be involved in any shape, form, or fashion in this investigation. This chief should step back and be quiet and let this investigation take its course. And this mayor should stand up and say, you know what, there's systemic issues within this police department. And it's not the individual police officers that I'm talking about. Mm. I'm talking about the system itself that would allow something like this to happen. And let me tell you, if it can happen like that happened, how... I don't know. I understand how some, there may be people watching this show that may say, man, that is a little scary because yeah. I'm a guy that backs the blue. I'm all about police officers and giving them the tools and the personnel they need to do their jobs. But when you have a police chief who's more of a politician than a police officer's police officer, maybe it's time for him to go. Tony, thank you.